Whether you're a photographer or a model, you've probably received lots of conflicting advice about photography model releases. Really, what are they and when do you need a model release? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about when and how to use model releases, some tips on how to negotiate a release, and I'll also provide a download for a no compensation model release form that you can modify for your own use and circumstances. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a Silicon Valley intellectual property attorney. Welcome back to my channel. So what is a model release? Well, a model release is an agreement. It's a contract between the model and the photographer or the model and the videographer granting rights to use the likeness of the model for commercial or promotional purposes. Model releases are essential in commercial photography because they protect the photographer and the publisher or the advertiser perhaps from later disputes over use of the photography or the videography. These agreements are also important for the models because they often set forth the compensation and the scope of the use of the model's likeness in commercial and promotional materials. And in more specialized cases, these agreements can set forth the model's boundaries on what types of photos are permissible and what context these photos can be used in. So when is a release required? Well, a release is required anytime there's a commercial use of the photo in advertising, promotion, packaging, anytime there's an implied endorsement or promotion of a product, service, or cause. These commercial uses can include advertisements or commercials, billboards, brochures, or other publications or public postings. And of course, websites may also be included as a commercial use. Another area where model releases are super important is when shooting video and photography for stock photography libraries where the photos or video will be licensed to other third parties. Most libraries require in the submission of work to the library for you to include the model releases. Another area where model releases are sometimes required are in contests and exhibitions where the exhibition organizers will often require model releases so that they can use the photography in promoting the event. A private portfolio use doesn't generally require a model release. However, a model release may be required if particular photos are used to solicit commercial work. Now there are some categories where a model release is not required. For example, editorial use for newsworthy or informative or educational purposes. Photos for personal use generally don't require a model release. These include family photos or personal collections of photos, even if the collections go into a book or go into an exhibition, where you're only showing your work and not using the photos for some other commercial purposes. Generally, a model release is not required. And finally, there's usually no release required when taking pictures of people in public. There's just no expectation of privacy when you're out in public. And generally, no release is required unless there's a very close tie to an individual and a commercial use. In this case, a release may be required. Next, I'd like to talk about what goes into a model release. And in doing so, it would be very unlawyerly of me if I failed to mention that the requirements vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, from state to state. So if you need specifics for a significant commercial project, you should consult an attorney in your state or jurisdiction. Okay, with that lawyer boilerplate out of the way, what goes into a model release? Well, the first thing in every model release should be the identification of the parties. Who's the model? Who's the photographer? How can they be contacted? What are the usage rights for the photography? Is it for unlimited purposes? Is it limited to stock photography or maybe web use? Also, what are the territories and the time limits on the model release? Can this be used anywhere in the US? Is it anywhere in the world? 
Is it limited to, to a year or to five years? Is there some limitation in either time or territory? What is the compensation being paid? Is the model being paid for his or her time? Are there ongoing royalty expectations from the use of the photography? Or maybe it's just an exchange for copies of the prints to add to the model's portfolio. There may, may be no compensation at all. But whatever the terms, it's important to include these details in the model release. And finally, when you're working with minors, minors cannot sign contracts. You have to get signatures from parents or guardians. And the age of contract in almost all states of the United States is 18. I believe that for Alabama and Nebraska, it's 19 and the age of contract for the state of Mississippi is 21. However, you should definitely check that if it's an issue in any of those three states. So let's talk about some tips for negotiating a model release. If you're a photographer, you should always get a model release when possible. You just never know when you're going to need it, even if it's for a non-commercial use. If you can get a model release, you should. And most professional photographers actually carry a pad around with them of model releases that they can grab on the go. I think it's important for the photographer to have a brief discussion with the model about what's contained in the model release, the nature and extent of the commercialization, what the photos will be used for, and the extent of the commercialization at least is understood at the time of the shoot. And of course, it's very important for the photographer to have a discussion with the model about any boundaries that the model might have with respect to the photography and with respect to the commercialization of the photos. From the model standpoint, it's important to read the agreement before signing. It's uncomfortable to negotiate contracts, especially when somebody has a pad of contracts, they rip one off, hand you a pen and ask you to sign. But it's okay to read through it. If you have questions about it, ask the questions. If there's terms that you want to have changed, scratch out any language that makes you uncomfortable and add language that you would like to see in the contract. Everything is negotiable when it comes to contracts, even if the contract is ripped off a pad of paper. Of course, if there's anything that makes you uncomfortable about the release, you shouldn't hesitate to get some legal professional help before adding your signature. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have a downloadable copy of a very basic no compensation model agreement. You can get the link in the discussion section below. This isn't intended to be a contract that you should immediately adopt, but rather a framework that you can use to adjust to the contours of your particular situation. I hope you find it useful. If you have any comments, thoughts, or suggestions on model releases and contracts, put them in the comments section below. We'd love to read them. Otherwise, I think you'll like this next video. I'll see you over there.